hello viewers welcome back to the moose mobile auto repair channel and today i have a 2014 chevrolet sonic and it has a 1.8 liter uh, ecotech engine and and today i'm going to be performing the transmission service now these vehicles came with either a 6t30 or a 6t40 automatic transmission uh, it doesn't really matter as to what transmission uh, you have because the procedure is relatively and exactly the same for either or so today i'm going to show you on how to perform the transmission service and also i'm going to show you on how to check the the fluid level uh, after i'm all finished now you probably want to drive the vehicle f for a bit until it gets to operating temperature and then uh, you should drain the fluid then uh, if the engine or the transmission is cold you probably want to warm it up a little bit so you're able to drain uh, uh, most of the fluid out now uh, i had a look at this vehicle and i checked service information and i also cross reference the VIN number uh, wasn't too sure as to what transmission this has but it's e either the 6T30 or the 6T40 and the procedure is exactly the same in order to uh, <laughs> perform the service so now I'm just I'm warming up the uh, engine and the transmission and I'm going to let it warm up for some time uh, I have a bunch of other work that I still have to do on this so for now I'm just I'm warming it up and going through the gears and then after it reaches operating a temperature then I will drain the fluid out so now this particular GM vehicle takes the uh, the Dextron 6 automatic transmission fluid so because I don't have enough of the Dextron 6 fluid, I'm just going to be using the, the Valvoline Max Life fluid. Now I've been using this fluid for roughly 15 years and I haven't had a single problem. It said it's for GM vehicles and it's, it has the <laughs> compatibility of the Dextron 6 fluid so I'm just going to be using this now uh, you can just use the AC Delco stuff or you can use the Valvoline stuff or anything that's uh, compatible with Dextron 6 transmission fluid so we are just going to be using a measuring uh, a container to measure how much fluid comes out and then we are going to put that much and then later we're going to go for a road test and then come back and then have a look at the fluid level. So uh, the first thing you want to do is to remove the, <laughs> the filler cap that's hiding here. You probably won't want to give this a wipe <laughs> after you're, you're all finished. So uh, we open it up or we're going to fill it up over here. Uh, after we're done so we are are underneath the vehicle here uh, the drain plug is, is right here it's an 11 <laughs> millimeter bolt so we are going to uh, to, to, to loosen it up And I have myself uh, a measuring container to measure the fluid. So we are going to remove this. Now we are just going to, uh, to, uh, to let this drain and measure how much uh, comes out.
I'm just using a, a block of wood to uh, to raise it up so that it, it doesn't spill. So we're roughly at around uh, three liters now. I think usually it's about 4.25 or four and a half or so. Could be uh, more or less. So I have uh, roughly 4.25 almost uh, drained out. It's still uh, dripping, trickling out, but there's not much. So we are going to uh, close it up now. So we are going to be closing it up. Now uh, you can wait for hours and hours. It's still going to go and drip. So it's pretty much all done now. So I got the uh, 4.25 liters. And you're going to uh, tighten it up. Uh, I'll put the torque spec for this. Uh, I believe it's about 106. You can uh, tighten it up snug. And, uh, and that should be okay. Just give this a wipe and you can wash down with brake cleaner uh, as well. You don't want to tighten it uh, too much. This is the old fluid that uh, came out. So we're going to install the, <laughs> the funnel here. So we are going to put roughly uh, four and a half liters in. Make sure that the fluid is going properly inside the hole. You don't want to spill any. Now we are going to remove the uh, the funnel out of the way. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to wipe this down now. You don't want any dirt getting inside the transmission. So you want to give this a good wipe. And if you can, just give it a quick wipe on the transmission side and then uh, then reinstall the cap. Just uh, just keep on on uh, on turning the cap on uh, until it stops and then it's tight. So uh, I have the scan tool here, and uh, I'm having a look at the transmission fluid temperature. Uh, it states in service information that the uh, that the fluid needs to be between 185 and 203 degrees Fahrenheit in order to check it. So now I'm just using a, a digital uh, leveler gauge to see if the vehicle uh, is leveled. It says it's, uh, it's one degree here. Uh, you are not going to get it perfect, but it will be close. It's very close to zero degrees, so, so I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. 
I have the engine <laughs> running now. It's idling uh, in park. I'm just waiting for the temperature <laughs> to rise and to be in the specified range. So anyhow, uh, if I put it here on the transmission, it, it, it's, it's moving and fluctuating a lot because of the vibration. So it's roughly uh, two degrees. Yeah, roughly 1.9 degrees. So it's very close to zero. Uh, so I'm happy with that. After the temperature rises to the specified range, then I'm going to show you on how to check the level. So uh, we are between 185 and 203 Fahrenheit. So we are ready to check the, uh, <laughs> the level. So uh, I'm at the driver's side to where the transmission is. If you look on where the axle is, you can see that, that, that there's a, a bolt here hiding up here. It's an 11 millimeter bolt. So, so we are going to have to open that in order to check the level. So I'm just going to uh, open this up. So I'm just using a ratcheting wrench. It's taking a, a very long time to, to loosen this up. So uh, I got the fluid temperature to reach 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to chuck it between 185 and, and 203 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to remove the plug and take caution that uh, this is extremely hot. So you're gonna have to be careful. So is dripping fluid now until the fluid comes to a drip you want it to be a drip and then uh, then you'll know you're at the proper level right now there's too much fluid inside so you want to drain out all that excess fluid until it becomes a, a drip and then we are going to reinstall the plug and just be careful because the, the fluid is extremely hot and you will burn yourself if you're not careful so now it's dripping so we are going to reinstall the plug I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands in there because it's extremely hot. I want to go behind and to get the plug in there. I'll let it drip some more and then uh, I will uh, reinstall the, the check plug. I may top it up just a tad bit because I don't want to get my hand in there because it's very hot. I, I, I don't want to burn myself. So I'll just let it all drain out and then I'm going to put the plug in. I may just top it up a tiny, tiny bit just to, uh, to, to level it up.
is dripping now. So I'm just gonna install a rag on my arm here so I don't get burnt. And then uh, I'm gonna install the plug now. getting a little bit burnt it's a, a stupid design by GM to make you burn yourself when you are, are checking this if you're working on the floor I'm just uh, reinstalling it now. I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to shut the vehicle off. So now I'm just going to uh, tighten up the, the check plug. I will put the torque spec on the screen uh, somewhere if you want to torque this down. You can just uh, tighten it up snug and then that should be okay. You don't need to tighten these up uh, too much. Now uh, I can understand what, as to why that the, that the guys that I used to work with at the GM dealer at the time uh, the guys never used to check the level on these because uh, I guess because of time and because that uh, you, you would get burnt so you would have to be careful so uh, I got roughly 750 <laughs> milliliters out we're probably just going to top it up a bit probably he a quarter of a liter and then that's it because uh, I let it drip uh, too much so we're probably gonna do a quarter of a liter top up and and then that's it so uh, I forgot to mention that if you want to warm up the transmission while the vehicle is uh, idling or is uh, <laughs> sitting in the driveway or parking lot uh, one thing that you can do to warm up the transmission faster is to hold down on the brake pedal with your left foot and then shift into drive or reverse gear and then hold down on the gas pedal or the accelerator as you are holding down the brake. And if you want, you can have the parking brake engaged. So now I have my left foot on the brake. Now I'm going to apply the, the, uh, the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. And you see the RPM has a maximum load. So when you hold this down, this is going to warm up the transmission faster. And you can do the same in uh, a, a, a reverse gear. Just proceed with caution when you are doing this. And just hold down the gas pedal all the way and it will stay at 2000 if you're in reverse gear. Back to neutral, back to drive. When you're in drive, it probably goes around 15, 1600 RPM. So now I'm going to put it back uh, into park. So uh, if you're having a hard time trying to, trying to get the temperature to rise or if it's taking too long, 
this is a good way to uh, to to help to increase the temperature of the transmission. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day and take care.